Hello and welcome to today's video. This time we'll be taking a look through my collection of Bloomsbury Classic Hardback with these fantastic and beautiful covers. So sit back, relax, and let's take a look. Okay, so I'm not sure if you've ever come across these, but they were published in the UK well, by Bloomsbury and uh, they were around apparently it seems from 1991 to about 1997 so they are starting to uh, show their age a little bit but I remember seeing these in the bookshops when um, in the 90s and I absolutely loved them and uh, I came across a post it was on uh, Twitter uh, where someone had said who remembers these lovely Bloomsbury classics and I definitely did remember it and I remember the ones that I used to have and I thought oh, I'd love to get those again and then I started looking them up online and found that there was um, well it looks like I've made my own list but it looks as if for fiction there was about 70 fiction hardback classics and about the same again for poetry now I'm not so fussed about the poetry ones but I do like the fiction ones and um I have got just under 30 for us to have a look at today. So Paul Bailey, now is my first one here, Out of Jerusalem. Now, most of the authors at the time were, they were publishing their regular novels uh, by Bloomsbury or Bloomsbury owned the rights to them. So uh, we'll just bear that in mind as you go along. And um, the jackets were designed by uh, a chap called Jeff Fisher. Now, Jeff Fisher was, uh, or Jeffrey Fisher was an Australian illustrator he does generally get a credit not perhaps not in this one but generally gets a credit on some of these and um yeah designed by jeff fisher so he would do the jacket that's actually quite a plain one um, and he'd do like this little uh, vignette or a, a cartouche i think is what they're called on the inside of each book as well and uh, they just feel so glorious to hold in the hand and generally speaking when i read them i take the covers off and they've got these beautiful like gold embossed spines there which look gorgeous in themselves but then they're just a really nice way to read the book the paper is really beautiful high quality absolutely gorgeous look they're they're sawn there as well um so you get the idea they're real luxury gift books and um what tends to happen with these and certainly what's happened with me is that when you start to get a few together they they just look better and better because the designs are so striking as i said this is i'm doing them in alphabetical order this is one of the the most basic ones uh, but if we uh work our way through this is a second one here julian barnes you start to put them together and uh, they do look rather rather nice brothers grimace is obviously like almost like a classic in effect the 12 dancing princesses and other fairy tales now, there is a Bloomsbury Classics series today, but it's nothing to do with these. And uh, it's amazing when you go online, how many people remember this series? It's, oh, they're lovely. I wish they'd never sort of gone away. But evidently, I guess they just weren't weren't selling well enough. It's the only real reason for publishers to knock these sorts of books on the head. But I am a real sucker for gift books. And um, because these, well, you know, some of these are 30 plus years old now which is amazing when you come to think about it um i've got oh my God, i've got this one in old late 60s pan title but it's a it's a classic which evidently bloomsbury owned the rights for um yeah so when you think they're 30 years old they actually represent really good value for money if you can find these second hand and i bought all of these second hand and i have not paid more than five pound for any of them and in fact i recently got 13 um for 99p each um so there you go yeah they are out there um ideally what you want to do is find somebody who's selling off their collection and then swoop in but they just look awesome if you just have a little look at the spines you can see what they look like they're just great they really really are great so i'll leave those there and do another pile here and we'll do a few overviews of them when you see them all together they just are the business they really really are Irving here. So some authors just had the one book published as a, a Bloomsbury classic. Some two, three. I think one author even had four. Um, so again, nice, nice classic of that. 
Now, a few of mine, this is an example, have got very, very light fading on the spine, but it's sort of inevitable. So do look out for that. And also because the paper itself is, well, I don't know how best to describe it. It is, it's not treated, so it can be a little bit susceptible to, um, to foxing. Um, some of the more popular books definitely exist in reprint, although the majority of the ones that I've bought have been first printings, but I've got some here are reprints and there's no difference at all, except, you know, the printing history down, you know, in the, on the first page there. But aren't they just gorgeous, eh? They really, really are very, very nice books indeed. I'll slide them out of the way. And Brian Moore. Yeah, Jacket Design, Jeff Fisher. And a lot of the books were ones that have been nominated for awards or who, or who actually had won awards. Um, and these are the ones that Bloomsbury decided to put into their classic imprints, English Patient, a perfect example of that. And I do vaguely remember, because uh, I was working in the book trade when these were being published, of, you know, almost like uh, table displays full of these. And uh, yeah, I don't know how they sort of slipped my mind. But as I said, I definitely had some of them. And um, in fact, I, I had the next one. I remember buying this the, the moment it came out and thinking, what a fantastic read. It was the first Will Self book I'd ever read. And it's terrific. Really, really recommend this one. So I was delighted to get this one recently. And the only copy I'd found online was about £15. And then once again, I got it amazingly for 99p. So uh, as I said, if you're patient, these books are definitely out there to be had. Another really, really striking, striking design on that jacket. And I did look on Jeff Fisher. He's sadly no longer with us. He's passed away now. But he, although the Bloomsbury one jackets are a little bit sort of, well, you could say arty, um, they don't depict anything. They're more um, sort of design works rather than anything else to do with the story. Um, Jeff Fisher actually did loads and loads of traditional sort of book covers, and he also did some illustrated children's books. So uh, he was quite accomplished, uh, you know, amongst his other work, really. But I think this almost simplistic design really works with this series. And as you can see, when you get a few together, they just are the business. They really, really are. So as I said, I have done my own list. Now, I'll, uh, if anyone is interested in having a copy of that list, because it is more comprehensive than what I found on Wikipedia, that I used that as a basis. Then I went online and every single book that I came across that was fiction as opposed to poetry, I added to that list. Um, so it's the best one I could find online. And it's because I've made it myself, which I often have to do sometimes. You make your own bibliography um, to know what's actually out there to collect. Another very big name in the 90s, of course, was Joanna Trump. Still big today, of course. But she was huge back then. I think this was a massive seller, wasn't it? And, of course, Bloomsbury may not have had the paperback rights to The Village Affair. I think Joanna Trollope was published by Corgi, as I recall, but they probably had the hardback rights. And back then, often publishers were publishing hardback by one and then paperback in another. Um, Terry Pratchett, for example, was hardback in Glance and um, paperback in Corgi until the end of his career, you know. So not that unusual. But yeah, I'd love to know if there's any more beyond the 70 or so that I've found. Uh, but as I said, it's a work in progress. I've done everything I can to try and track these down. And um, there are still some available on Amazon, if you can believe it. And they're listed as new. But the main source for finding these, um, apart from stalking your local secondhand bookshops, of course, is going to be just down uh, on eBay. You know, just keep your eyes peeled. There's loads up there. I mean, there's absolutely loads. Just type in Bloomsbury Classics. And work your way through the list really and uh, hopefully you'll do like i did and come across a few bargains to start your collection but these just look so amazing and i'll uh, put some photos up in a minute of them spine on so we can really appreciate their loveliness this is the biggest one i've got it's a real huge one this um, and i don't know if, if that's a little too big for this particular format you know maybe just me but i uh, think that was a, a biggie another one by tobias wolf in pharaoh's army and the last one, but also a very, very good one, is Orlando. What a gorgeous edition of Orlando that is. 
absolutely beautiful, isn't it? And I think if you're like me and you love books, these Bloomsbury hardback classics tick many boxes. They're beautiful to begin with. The actual books and authors are excellent and they just look amazing and uh, very, very great value for money to boot. So you can't really go wrong. So as we take one last look through the beauty that is the Bloomsbury hardback classics, if you've enjoyed this video today, do please give it that thumbs up. If you've not already, do please hit the subscribe button for regular vintage book and paperback content. And I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.